Good afternoon on this beautiful Thursday afternoon, the first day of October. <laughs> my name is Martin Coward, and my guest today is Scott Mason, and you are here for Noonday Meditation and Contemplative Prayer Power Hour, where we gather together every day at noon, Eastern Daylight Time, Monday through Saturday, to love and support each other through the pandemic. Scott is a public speaker, he's a coach, and he's been inspired by the work that I'm doing with this broadcast and many others are doing. And he has come up with this brilliant idea of coming up with a space called, I think it's gonna be called Argo. He hasn't completely finished that out yet, but I'll let him talk to you more about why that is. But today I want to talk, and the idea is to create space for others to come together when maybe they've discovered they've spent their whole life climbing the mountain only to find they've gotten to the top of the wrong mountain. Yeah. And that yeah. can feel very discouraging. I know I've done it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I have certainly found myself there in it. And the beauty is with the love and support of each other, we can find a new mountain that will probably be more rewarding, more exciting, and more fun. Yeah. So that's enough for me today, but I'm going to introduce that Scott, talk a little bit about his story and why he's creating this wonderful new space for, for, for people to find themselves uh, and discover themselves and to be able to use these painful experiences of the past and transform them into powerful uh, opportunities for the future. Yeah. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. I think that one of the things that you, what you talked about a minute ago really reminds me of that folks might relate to is a very dear friend of mine, a mentor that I had for 20 years of my career, although he practiced law, which is what I used to be for a long, long time before that. He put so much blood, sweat, tears, and effort into his career. He was brilliant. He worked hard. He retired. He got that brass ring of that retirement. And then he looked back and he said to himself, nothing that I did mattered, nothing. I'm forgotten, it's like I was never there. He did exactly what you just talked about. He climbed to the top of the wrong mountain and looked out and there was nothing to see but a desert. I think that that is one of the huge human tragedies that people experience. And so many times in their lives, they don't have a space to find, to move to a different mountain. They don't even know that a different mountain can exist and they need some guidance, some love and support to get there. And they may even need a community to help them on that climb so they can see. They certainly don't realize that there may be massive transformational, beautiful things that they have encouraged, you know, they've encountered on their climb up the mountain that they thought was the wrong one that can make the following mountain climb even more phenomenal. And, and let's say hello to our one of our guests that hello, Michael Kensing. Um, can you see the banners when they come up, Scott? I can. Okay, if they come up, just stop for a second and just say, acknowledge them and say, because that's, that's how we know when people are here. I can't tell unless people... Put it in the chat box so i encourage people to put it in the chat box and then i just stop and say hello thank you for coming and if you have any questions and so we have more of an engaging conversation and less of a monologue because i really enjoy the engagement of the people who, who show up uh and uh participate with me on a daily basis so welcome michael and I, if you didn't get and here is my good friend audrey smalls you might know audrey smalls i know audrey of course she's I wonderful know her and then look at here we got my friend rohit and we've got we've got the real people who just show up almost every day for me, and I and I'm here for them. And it's just a very exciting to have you here with us today, and my guest Scott. So we're talking about all of us in some ways have climbed the wrong mountain and got ourselves distraught. Yeah. And uh, so we're talking about that and how and what he's doing to create space for people to get back and climb the right mountain. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that his story taught me was that anytime you climb a quote unquote wrong mountain or think that you're, you've done something that's a waste of your time and effort, 
it's always part of a larger journey and a larger arc that you may not be fully aware mm -hmm. um, exists until you have walked through it. Um, one of the things I'm really adamant and on a personal mission to create because of my own journey is the space for people, people to understand that when one journey appears to end, another is just starting and that other journey builds on the first one and that our lives are constantly building on these experiences to come further and further bring us closer to connection to our ultimate purpose. Um, divinity, you know, divine intelligence, providence, whatever you might call it, it's all there. It's part of the same journey that we're on together. And yes, it would be awesome to have an oasis. And I think that that's something a lot of folks feel that they don't have. You know, unfortunately, I think the pandemic has created um, a real exposure of the limitations that the cultural systems that we've put into place have with regards to the ability of people to connect to find purpose. And yet coronavirus and the pandemic and the lockdown and every all of the changes that we're going through now open up new doors through that exposure to creating those sorts of spaces. And that's what I'm on this earth to do. Oleg, it was so good to see you. You are awesome. I hear you were a guest on this as well. And I hear you were pretty incredible. And you are <laughs> definitely someone who is climbing the same mountain and on a very extraordinary journey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, he was quite a, he is quite a beautiful man and he is, uh, has a great, wonderful story. And um, that's what we're here for. We're here to share our stories because that's how we heal. We heal in telling our stories yeah. of, of, uh, of, uh, of confrontation, the story of climbing the, I mean, I certainly climbed the wrong mountain and that's when I found myself in the darkest of my, of my life and I thought I was just petrified. And, um, but it was through that experience of um, climbing the wrong mountain to find out that I was, but then I'm <laughs> and all that I made up about that, about myself uh, was painful. But the beauty is once I realized that uh, I needed that, I needed that to happen in order for me to um, get off that mountain and get on one that, that it's, it's more my purpose. And that's where I am today. So I think that's what, that's what you're, that's what's going on here. And I think everybody on this, I know, I know Oleg has had that same experience. Yeah. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I'd even say I have a lot of folks beat. I am on my fourth career. So I have climbed at least three prior mountains, all of which seemed at the time like they were the wrong ones. I don't think any of them were anything approaching any sort of ultimate destination or connection to my higher purpose, but they each built on each other. And lessons learned from all of them helped make each of them a little bit of a closer um, mountain climb to the right one. Question for you on that. I'm just curious, how many of those older mountains were you climbing for financial reward? The first one, absolutely, as well as another ego-based reward, which was prestige and to some extent power. Mm -hmm. and influence, ability to influence others mm -hmm. for my own needs, not necessarily for needs of service. I got you. Each one was a little bit further away from that, but it wasn't until I began to slide down the third mountain and then build up to the fourth one that a lot of the circuits began to close and the direction went to change. And as a gay man, not sure how I can find love, develop relationship, get deeper needs met. That's a real challenge for a lot of folks in our community. I think that that's, yeah. And then that can be a, a whole mountain that people <laughs> yeah, I, cer I certainly climbed up a very wrong mountain before I found the right one there. Can I give you, can I offer, Michael, can I offer you a little bit of um, a suggestion? Practice self-love. It doesn't matter what kind of man you are. If you're looking for love, you're looking for deeper relationships, develop one with yourself get really intimate with you do everything make make self-love your primary purpose in life and just see what happens just see what happens um if you don't if you want some steps on how to do that uh you can join the financial mystic sanctuary facebook group and you will find inside that group a a course a, a two-part course practicing the art of being present your keys to a life of love, joy, and prosperity. And in that course, it is exactly what that is. I don't say it that way, but it is a course on how 
to get intimate and truly get to know that part of yourself that is so loving, that nur is nurtured by nurturing and do it with yourself because you can't find it with anybody outside you until you can really develop it within yourself. Does that help? It's good to hear. You know, that's one of those things where I had to find the ability to love myself, but I also had to learn how to love myself, develop the skill of love and understanding that like any sort of practice, it is one you have to engage in consistently. You start with yourself and then you can become that person that is able to love others and then people love and respond and in response to that. Yes, yes, Michael, that is exactly what we're here for. This is what this space is for. And that's exactly the space that Scott's trying to create because it's all about self-love. We attack ourselves. We beat ourselves. I mean, the guy who climbed, the story about the guy who climbed the mountain, he beat himself up, but, but he did. He was just doing what he thought he was supposed to do. He didn't, he, only thing he knew to do. And then he got to the top and he beat himself up for climbing the wrong mountain. That's not loving yourself. You got to say, oh, I love myself and understand what's behind that and get to know what did you learn about yourself? And now you can, you're never too late to start loving yourself more deeply. <laughs> and in fact, it's one of those things that I would say the loving yourself more deeply is something that is an ongoing process. You love yourself more and more and more deeply forever. Right. And as you do that, your capacity to love others and then to receive love becomes deeper and deeper and deeper and greater and greater and greater. Yeah. Uh, when I, you know, when I met my husband 22 years ago, Sisyphus, another man who loves and appreciates mythology, he was climbing up that mountain. He almost would get that stone over the hill and then it would roll right back down over and over again. Uh, I, I <laughs> that speak in my language, man. Um, yeah. You know, and, and imagine, interestingly enough, his eternally climbing the same mountain was punishment for his own egotism and hubris. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, the ego punishes itself. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it can lead to your own damnation. Yes. But it's the damnation of your own creation. Imagine if Sisyphus in that story or my friend Wright had chosen a different approach to how they were conceiving the mountain or what their goal was in going up the mountain, what they were even intending to do, maybe even not caring so much about reaching the top. You know it well. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, well, that's kind of 2020. You know, he was doing what he knew what to do. Yeah. Uh, and he was climbing the only mountain he knew to climb. And I mean, I know when I was climbing the mountain to get to be financially successful and have my fancy office on Park Avenue, I thought I had reached the top of the mountain and only to find myself miserable, um, just like him. But I didn't know, I didn't know there was another mountain to climb. I yeah. mean, and I was, and I was, I was climbing it based on fear because I felt like I had to prove that I was worthy of love by being successful and important. And, uh, and that was the mountain I was climbing and it was, and I painfully discovered that none of that stuff mattered. What really mattered is I created a difference. I create space like this. So, um, you know, it was by loving myself, <laughs> yeah. but we all do that. And that's, and that's, and you do it. And, uh, so the encouragement I give to Michael here is that we've all struggled trying to get into relationships with people because we didn't know how we didn't have the tools. We didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And so the value of what Scott's doing and what I'm doing is we're trying to share with you. We are sharing with you. You're not trying. We are sharing with you from our experiences of, of, of what you're looking for, what's worked and what hasn't worked. Because you're not alone. We're here with you. It's so true. And the beauty of climbing a mountain and understanding once your eyes are open that that mountain isn't the entire universe, that there's a whole range of mountains for you to climb, <laughs> is that with every climb that you do, you get better and better and stronger and stronger. And so what you are experiencing as you go up the different mountains and the view that you get once you reach that top becomes successively better and better over time. And that's an amazing, that's one of the true beauties of life. If we choose to take that route, if we choose to create that space for ourselves to tap into that love and to, and to move our experiences forward over and over again, even when they seem like they're meaningless. Exactly. Yeah. As you, as you, as you, as you wake up and you, I mean, from the, the the jolt of not getting to getting what you wanted, the ego not getting what it wanted, yeah. wakes us up to wanting to now. Now, do we go out and try to find another mountain, or do we go inside ourselves and we find out who we truly are? 
Yeah. And that's what we're talking about. That's what we mean by the who is that intimate part of you. And if you find that part, because all it is, you got, you got stories out of the way. It's there. It's always there. That, yes. infinite, that infinite intelligence, that, that providence, that presence is in you, Michael. It's in every single human being out there. Remember, lots of humans, one being. We all have the same infinite intelligence within us. Once you develop that relationship, that is going to take you up the next mountain. Because then you're going to be what Scott calls purpose. That's going to take you up the mountain. Because it's not you taking it, it's it's your purpose, it's your it's your infinite intelligence, it's your providence that's taking you up the next mountain. It's right, it's lead, it's running your life for you, and that's a much more exciting way to live. And if you're if you're if you're if you're looking for a relationship, if that's your mountain, take it with the most lovable, most compassionate, most beautiful part of yourself, and you'll get what you're looking for. The funny thing about mountain climbing is that you never know what sort of um, crack in the mountain or what sort of path there might be that you weren't expecting. And, and that's when the amazing stuff happens. Michael, again, living in shame about being gay is not a great mountain to live on. That is something, I mean, I'm sure you have something you probably want to say about that immediately. I so much I can say about that. <laughs> I've had, you're my guest. I want to hear what you got to say first. <laughs> you know, it's sort of funny because, thank you, that's something I really, really feel strongly about. You know, it's funny. I never actually, it never occurred to me when I realized I was gay that that was something to be ashamed of until I began to be ex exposed to more external messages about it. And again, that's sort of when the, um, the vision of someone else's mountain or someone else's reality became my reality. And the, the shame, the shame set in exactly LOL. Yes. <laughs> so the shame basically was something that became externalized into me. And then I re-externalized outwardly. And one of the most powerful things that I learned to do and that my journey has really brought me to is getting to understand that I have the power in every facet of my life to create my own narrative and my own feeling states about who I am. Literally, it's the same thing we were talking about a minute ago, to step off the mountain and go to another one. That shame only exists if I care what other people think about me being gay. And me caring about what other people think is totally within my internal purview. That goes back to the internal love. I'm going to love myself for who and what I am. Being gay is, is an integral part of the loving person that I am. Providence made me gay for a reason that I'm too small to comprehend. I would never want to experience or externalize hubris saying that I know better than Providence itself. And that has been able to connect me to what being gay really is, which is the ability to love. That's what defines it. Yeah, and I would even say that that's that story in your head, the shame story, is telling you you're not good enough for love, and it's a lie. So you're you're living your life stuck in an egoic lie that makes you feel bad. So through contemplative prayer and through self love, we 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 listen to the shame. What's shame saying? Shame says whatever it's telling you about yourself that's not, not that makes you feel bad. You say, is that true that I'm not lovable, that I'm not a wonderful, good man? Of course not. You're a beautiful, loving man. I know you. And um, and you deserve to have a wonderful, loving relationship. And so, but it takes practice. Self-love takes practice. And coming here every day and you can take do the, do the webinar. Um, I'd love it if you did. Um, and it practice self-love and you will be amazed at what you're going to find out about yourself. And that, that shame, that feeling of shame, that dark shadow of shame, it will literally dissolve. Once you realize really what a wonderful, loving human being you are deep inside, all that stuff just goes away. It just, it just dissolves. Well, it's funny because what you're talking about also is the unexpected gift of being gay. Yeah. When there is that much social loading that goes on to our identity, particularly one that um, an identity that is rooted in who and what we love and our very capacity to love, just as climbing the hardest mountain builds the best mountain climbing muscles, the self-acceptance and love practice that you engage in in order to shed that 
lack of love for yourself or that shame gives you unprecedented, indescribable tools yeah. that are more powerful than one can imagine to deal with a whole other host of situations in our lives. And then you can do what Scott and I are doing. You can go out because I'm going to promise you, once you kind of get, once you get the realization that what a wonderful, beautiful man you are, there's going to be another ma gay man out there just like you who's, who's struggling to love himself. <laughs> and they're going to need you to help bring them along, just like mm -hmm. we're doing with you, because we love you. We're not mm -hmm. doing anything. We love you, and we want you to have, I want you, my, I know you, and I, and, I, and I know Scott, and I can tell you right now, we want nothing more than for you to have a loving, wonderful life. There's no other agenda going on right here. And that's why we do what we do. And that's self-love. I do it out of my love for myself because I love myself enough to love you and Scott. That makes sense. It's funny because around that issue, once I truly came to a place of self-acceptance and love, thanks for the passionate share, and that passion is 100% sincere. Irish Catholic, look, I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian household as well, and um, I don't know if the guilt was as big as with Catholicism, but the, the, the condemnation of fire and brimstone and hell, it was all the way there, all the time. I can relate. <laughs> Yeah, I grew up in the South and I heard someone tell me, my father tell me the only thing worse than an N word was a queer. That's what I grew up with from my father. And and that that was put in my interior carrier. And it took me years to get through that. And um and forgive my father for saying those kind of, I don't think he even believed it. I think he just wanted to make me feel bad. But I think he liked to use intimidation as a way to kind of make create shame. And so, I, I mean, I know exactly what you're talking about. And the thing is, whether it's Roman Catholic church or your parents or whoever else that just couldn't accept themselves, you know, and that's what it's all about. Don't, don't let them, don't let people pass that on to you. Acknowledge it. It happened. I just acknowledge what happened to me. And, uh, it, but it did impact my life. Certainly. It certainly made me feel shame and feel like there was something wrong with me for, for a good part of it. But once that was accepted, I don't know about you, Martin, or anyone else you know, watching this. One of the things that's amazing about it is I get it. And I say I see that is with caps. Yeah, I would rather you had cancer than were gay. I mean, look, my yeah. I mean, I heard those sorts of things too. And and right, I think that once we can get past that, once we can embrace that that inner love and connect ourselves with the providence that loves us and made us the way we are and wants us to be gay and happy and joyful then our capacity to love others not only is going to attract love to us in a romantic sense or in a partner sense, but it's also going to expand our ability to love and understand and impact people who are in situations that are completely different from ours, but who need that um, love and attention because of their own ostracization or their shame or whatever other issues that they might be facing um, in a way that's so broad-based and expansive, you won't even be able to imagine it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, we 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 are living in a time where there's still, I mean, <laughs> there's still people who who, who despise us, you know, there's because they despise themselves. Yeah, you know, they they don't love themselves. I mean, I'm not talking, I don't know anything about your mother, but there's a part of her that she doesn't like. There's a part of her that she doesn't love, and she's afraid of that part of herself. I don't know what all that is, but you but you you have the choice whether you're gonna let her pass that on to you or not. And the, 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 and the action is to not is to love yourself. Don't believe her stuff that, you know, that you rather have cancer than than be gay. That's 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 mean. It's just it's just it's not true. You know, I call it something called compassionate truth. Unless you tell somebody something from compassion, it is never true because it's mean. Yep. If I tell you something, it's oh, I'm going to tell you my that may be her truth, but it's mean and it's not true always have to have compassionate truth for it to have any meaning to it. Truth without compassion is mean, it, it is mean and compassion without any truth is almost meaningless. You got to yeah. put it together for it to have some real power. Yeah. Yeah. And again, once that sort of becomes part of your default thinking method and integrates and really blossoms in your heart and in your soul, 
the way you interact with each other, other people, and the way that you're projecting out in the world, and the people that that attracts to you also change because we all need compassion from others in our lives. If we're not able to wrap ourselves into our own self-compassion and able to embrace that and really externalize that, we're not going to be able to be, we're going to be the people that are criticizing others and saying, you're not as, you're going to hell, you should feel guilty, you're this, that, and the other. But once you are able to rid yourself of that, bring in a different mode of thinking and a different mode of being, that's what you're bringing out into the world. And that compassion that you give out attracts people who feel compassion themselves. And so you receive it even more. And the receipt of compassion is every bit as transformative in the right moment as being able to feel it and give it to others, as someone who has needed compassion and gotten it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I don't think there's a, that's beautifully, beautifully, beautifully said. I think that the idea of the act of being compassionate and empathetic. And uh, I think that's what the world needs in leadership right now. We need leaders who are empathetic and compassionate and trustworthy and competent. Yeah. And we need it. But we got we, but we don't start by talking about those out there. We start with how can I be more trustworthy mm-hmm. and and, and more transparent. How can I be more empathetic Absolutely. for myself? And how can I be more compassionate and for myself? And how can I be more and, 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 and be a, just a competent, smart, intelligent, engaged human being with myself? In a democracy like ours, I think the power of that mode of thinking and the importance of it is even greater than in any other system because the leaders that we have in a democracy are a reflection of who and what we are as a people. We're voting based on who we are. So really, on in the most profound sense possible, I have deep compassion for others. Need to give it to yourself. Please do. Yes. That's a powerful thing to even say because many people live their entire lives and they never say, I need to give compassion to myself. It never even occurs to them that that's a possibility. That is the practice of self-love. That is the practice of self-love. And uh, so I'm glad I'm glad you're waking up to this because, you, you know, if you can give compassion to others, you know, you're a compassionate person. So just put yourself on put yourself on the priority list. Make yourself first. You deserve it. Make yourself first and see what happens. It's almost like a record groove, at least for me. I start to hear that song that I don't like, which is the voice of Um, Mm self-criticism. It might be, you know, I might name it after some artist that I can't stand, but then I take that record off and I put it, put a different, you know, album on. And it's a lot better. And that's what's singing in my mind. Thank you, Michael. It was so nice to meet you, by the way. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Michael is a, a fellow Mankind Project brother. Oh. Scott's you, a Mankind Project guy, too. Yeah. What a gift that was. Isn't that, isn't that a wonderful organization? Oh, that, yeah, uh, definitely. Of experience that, um, and that, and that having that community of open-minded men around the world who are willing to do this kind of courageous work on themselves to look at their shadows and look at the yeah. things that keep them from being is, is amazing. So, M- Michael, I want to encourage you. You're, on the, you're doing it. You're, you're doing it. You just keep doing it. <laughs> Do you know, you're you, the fact that you showed up today and you shared yeah. art and you engaged in our conversation, which I think has been f- phenomenal because it's really added to the, the, the this, this hour. Um, I know it has for me and I can tell by, by, by Scott's reaction. It's, it's been a bit, you've made this show your, your willingness to show up today and share your story and share your truth as what made is what's put the power in this hour. And I want you to know that and how much I appreciate you doing that. I want to thank you for that too. You know, one of the beauties of these sorts of formats and these platforms that we're on right now is that people that might not otherwise have a way to share of themselves do so. And one of the things that you did that, from my perspective, was really beautiful was you utterly and completely seized the opportunity. Yes, it was cool. Oh, and that you feel safe here. Martin. What a beautiful thing that you've created to do that for folks. Yeah, you know, I I know I'm getting a little emotional thinking about it. <laughs> and it is worth of getting emotional over, right? Because really that's cool. one of those things we feel. Know, you know, yeah, it's it's a fulfilling sense of emotion if I can if I can bring some 
if I can let people know how what a, what a wonderful person they are and help them see through the the darkness into the light of their own their own beauty. It's just quite a, it's a, it's a wonderful experience. So and look, just as sometimes people feel shame around being gay, sometimes people feel shame about having these sort of emotions, like you were just expressing now. And self love, by the way, is acknowledging the beauty and the power of those emotions. Yeah, and really getting to engage in them. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. Very much so. We're all in the same. We're all doing. We're all here together. That's exactly. And, and Audrey and Oleg and everyone else that was here. To love and support each other through this time. And uh, so it's getting, uh, it's about, it's about 30 minutes after. And I want to ask, go ahead and say a few things. Let me get the timer set. We're going to do 20 minutes of meditation. Uh, so, and, uh, and I will lead that and because people are familiar with my, my leadership on that. So I'll, I'll take that part out of your hand. I don't, so, yeah. but, um, but go, take about five more minutes and let's see what anything else you want to, you want to, I, I want you to talk a little bit about what you're doing, Scott, and, and what you, what, what mountain you're climbing. Uh, why don't you take about five minutes to talk about the mountain you're climbing yeah. as you've discovered these newer parts of yourself practicing self-love. Yeah, thank you so much. So, uh, you know, I've been in a big transition my year uh, myself this year. A lot of this year has been, for me, especially earlier in the year, was figuring out exactly what my purpose was after the last mountain I was climbing abruptly <laughs> came to a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite jump off of it, but I had to find a way to get down off that cliff without smashing on the rocks below completely. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things that I did was exactly some of the techniques that Mark Martin talks about and works with here. Um, you know, really being contemplative, really focusing on meditation, working in the inner voice, going to institutions like the Mankind Project to work through to connect myself to what my purpose was. And really engaging in that, trying to work through the shame of having lived more than 50 years on this planet and not necessarily understanding what my purpose was, um, was something that I, it was a journey that I've been on that I can relate to and which is why I speak to everything that people have raised today with such compassion and power for. No shame there. It's, it's See, isn't that great that you're showing me, Michael, the compassion, beautiful man's tears and yes, exactly. You're showing us compassion what Martin said earlier is so clearly applicable to you there. Turn those, turn that compassion back on yourself. Say the exact same things to yourself when you're feeling the shame about being gay or the lack of connection with other gay men or whatever that you exactly gave to us. Type those words back into your own mental track. You will be so glad you did that. I know. <laughs> You know, reach out to other men who might be feeling disconnected right now and just give them a phone call and tell them you, you're thinking about them. You Absolutely. Know, I, know you, I know you've got gay friends and they're alone and they might be feeling alone. Just say, I know you're in the, you're, we're in the middle of this COVID-19 and we're being physically isolated. I just called to see how you're doing and see what happens. You know, I was thinking about you and I was just calling it. I do, I do that a lot these days. I just find myself all of a sudden somebody will pop in my head. And then that's me to be gay. And I'll say, I haven't spoken to Bobby Holmes in a long time. Yeah. And I'll just get on the phone and I'll say, Bobby, how are you doing? He said, Oh my God. And we share and we and we and we both realize we've we've had such ep epiphanies in the last few months that, that we really enjoy the engagement. Uh, and it breaks that isolation. So, you know, that's a, that's a thought too. That's an action step you could take. It's just give yourself a call, call, call somebody you know that's gay and just say, as your friend, and I just wanted to call and check and see how you were doing. It's amazing because one of the potential tragedies that this has brought upon us, again, that is also an opening, is the fact that the social isolation and the sort of the lockdown has made it in a way easier for us to retreat within ourselves and disconnect. And that's something that we really need to be intentional about being aware of and then be bold about breaking. Because in my observation, almost no one objects to hearing from someone that they haven't heard from in a while in this. People need to be reminded about the existence of relationships or those that they cared about, even if we think that they might not. And that gives us a huge opportunity. Yes. I'm glad. I'm glad you agree with that, man. Because, um, you know, look, at the end of the day, for instance, we made a connection with each other that we would have never had before. And I'm grateful for that. 
as an example of it. I'm grateful for that too. So listen now, we're going to do a little meditation. Thank you so much, Scott, for your comments and your wisdom today. I appreciate you coming on Thank and you. sharing it with us. Uh, and I want to encourage you now to stick around for the meditation. Your ego, your ego is not going to want to stick around because when you meditate, you have to let it go. And it's like a little mini death to the ego. So, it, you know, if I, oh, I'm going to be bored. I don't want to sit for 20 minutes. I'm going to encourage, it's an act of self-love. Go inside and find out who you are. Who is that real you inside you? Who is that infinite, intelligent, creative, genius, loving part of you that's going to guide you through the rest of your life? You're not going to hear it. You might hear about it from me and Scott, but I want you to hear yours. I want you to hear your inner voice, that inner voice that loves you and will confirm for you what a beautiful person you are. So please, please, please. Just, just set it aside the next 20 minutes of self-love. This is what this is. This, this is an act of self. Contemplative prayer is an act of it's stopping the ego thinking mind. It's stopping the activities in the external and going inside yourself to love who you are, the truth of who you are. And let go of the shame on the way in. You don't need shame in there. Okay. So here we go. Let me set the timer. And let's get started. So, encouragement, raise your hands in the air and just hold them in the air and just get still. And feel that life force energy in your hands, in your arms, in your body. That is life. That's as far as you have to go to find the divine in you. It is you. Providence, I think Scott calls it. It's you. It's right there. It's what raised your hands up. I promise you, if you weren't alive, you could have the biggest muscles on the planet. They would not move. <laughs> so you can put them down now and you can relax. I just do that. I want you to really embody the spirit of life within you before we settle in to just relaxing and feeling that life flow inside your body. What is it like to be inside your toes, inside your hands? You know, take your focus off your thoughts for a moment and just put some intention into your body. Feel the spirit of life within you. Create some space for yourself around your thoughts and beliefs and judgments. They're all objects that you can let go of. Let go of any belief or opinion you might have of me right now or Scott or yourself or God or COVID-19 or the president. Everything. Hold on to nothing. And allow yourself to just fall back into love. Fall back into the emptiness, the stillness. Look in your mind's eye out into the universe and see the space between the stars and know it's the space between the stars. It's the same space within you that creates the stars. We are co-creators of everything you see, feel, and touch. Every form comes from the formless nature of ourselves. Our infinite intelligence, our infinite time. We are timeless. We're loving. We're powerful. We don't have to climb mountains, we build mountains. We create mountains. Fall into that infinite creative source of power sitting in you. And be still. Let go of everything that's in this way 
and listen. Allow the interval bell to wake you up from any thought trances you might have found yourself in. Come out of the trance, let go of the thought, and fall back into love.
allow the bell to wake you up. We all fall into these thought trances and we think we're meditating, but we're not. So wake up. Meditation is not about going to sleep into a thought. It's waking up the spirit within you. Be alive, awake.
wake up and reset fall back into love fall back into emptiness Listen to the stillness. And now come back into the space, open your eyes, wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers. How you feeling? How you feeling, Scott? Beautiful, man. Nice to go inside, right? Just oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Peaceful. Yes. Yes, it is. I am. <laughs> it's a good addiction, isn't it? Addiction to stillness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the heart, it's a real the, gift. The heart longs for it. And um, so, anybody out in the world want to comment before we close up today? I'd love to hear your comments. How you feeling, Michael? Again, I want to encourage you to please go to the Financial Mystic Sanctuary Facebook group and if you're not, join us and you will find um, my course in there, Practicing the Art of Being Present, Your Key to Living a Life of Love, Joy, and Prosperity. And you know what? It works. It works. And I know it works because I, <laughs> it, <laughs> because it works with me. <laughs> the more I practice, I'm just sharing with you what's working for me. And it's working for many of the people that I work with. So, mm -hmm. uh, and it's based on some very, very sound spiritual principles that I've learned and picked up over the last 40 years. So 
um, I really encourage you to, if you're looking for those relationships, um, there's a, there's a guide for you right there. Just get started. <laughs> uh, this is from my friend, Audrey. Audrey. So isn't good she, to see you. Isn't she wonderful? I just love her and thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure it will path, pass, uh, paths will cross again, Michael. And I'm excited about that. And Audrey, it is really good to see you. Yeah, isn't she wonderful? I just, oh, she's a delight. I just love her, love her, love her, love her. So everyone, with nothing else to say, may love and prosperity prevail.